I'm going to say this. Answer honestly because it's much more valuable for viewers to hear the real answers and give the yes or no first. Gotcha. Right? If there's more to say after that, give the yes or no first. Okay. I'm nervous. I got one little bit of sweat just. So I'm ready. Did you know that your productive your productivity is being measured and compared to other chip owners by the supervisor staff? Not trying, it just happens. Yes, kind of. Uh, I don't really think of it as uh, like a, a physical measurement with you know statistics and numbers. I I see it more as how well does the entire floor run when we have this chip runner versus the chip runner. So some insight for you, okay? The supervising uh, staff <laughs> really, really, really understand everything that's going on in the room. Okay, because of that it's incredibly easy for them to notice nuances. Yeah. And, I mean, I can certainly relate to this. Like, you notice every single thing that goes wrong as a supervisor. You sure. notice every single thing that goes right or smoothly or faster than what you're used to. And you're always measuring the, the people in the chip under positions. Why? Because they're on their feet. They're, all the they're time. running around. They're interacting. By the way, if you're going to be a chip runner, you got to be on your feet all day. I heavily recommend... Uh soles like inserts for your shoes uh get some really comfortable shoes as well it's uh it's a job if you for real yeah if you aren't ready to be on your feet all the time for the entire shift it's it's gonna be rough i made the mistake once of hiring somebody that was a very big gentleman for that job and it was just impossible for him he quit after two days yeah it's yeah, yeah it, it can get you really tired really quick uh that's one thing i can be thankful for my past jobs for doing is just having me on my feet constantly moving all the time because I got here and it wasn't much different. That makes sense, yeah. actually. Yeah, you were sort of trained for that. It, it's sort of what it's like being a supervisor, too. For anyone that's <laughs> yeah. being a supervisor. When I did it, yeah. it was just on my feet all day, all day, all day. All right, you ready that's for great. the next one? 100%. Let's do it. Did you know that your time as a chip runner is constantly being evaluated to see if you would make a good dealer? I actually didn't know that. Absolutely. So, I did not. one thing about being a chip runner, it is a six-month or more interview. Right? If you think about when you get hired for a job in general, like if we're auditioning a dealer, you get a very little interaction opportunity with that person. It's just yeah. like one day and... One day for like 10, 15 minutes sitting yeah. there. Yeah. And so you, you get the audition and then sometimes they do a separate interview. But it's much better to like get somebody for six months and really get to yeah. know them to see if they would be somebody that would make sense to promote to that position. So yeah. yes, you're, you're absolutely being evaluated for that. You're also being evaluated loosely for supervisor for what it's worth. That's I've I've only known like one person that's ever been that's ever gone from that position to, to supervisor and they did a great job. Really? But well right. they, they went from uh, chip runner to dual dealer supervisor. Okay. Yeah, and that was just completely circumstantial. Um, but that's, that, that sounds interesting, said, yeah. You are sort of being evaluated for that because what really what that really means, it's not as A B C as I'm making it sound. Yeah. They're gonna remember their interactions with you. And so when you do become a dealer one day, if you start dealing and learning and getting to the point where maybe you want to be a supervisor, they're going to remember all that stuff. Yeah. They're, they're going to remember, remember the, how you ran yeah. things, how you communicated with people, because you don't, dealers don't, you don't get an opportunity to see that with dealers, really. It's true, because they're always sitting at the tables, exactly, just, yeah, you know, totally you don't get to see thing. a whole lot of the other interactions. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, you're absolutely, like, all of this stuff, it, being a chip runner, listen, if, I'm saying this to the audience right now, <laughs> if you get a job as a chip runner somewhere, you are being interviewed for that and think of it as an interview for that entire time so everything that Alex is talking about here he's being polite to people he's learning how to how to have interactions um, just all of those things are super valuable realize what you're involved in realize that you're being monitored for other potential stuff and realize especially that the supervising staff understands everything in this room and so it's not like your situation where you're learning what it's like and doing your job they're able to see the important things about what you do and evaluate on top of that very easily there's a lot of people that end up getting the opportunity of being a chip runner and don't realize this stuff and they goof off and they're lazy and they're more focused on whatever it is that they want in their life and then they come and they say I want to be a dealer and it's like and it's like mm, doesn't matter it. if you can pitch sometimes it doesn't yeah. matter if you can do the job of dealing if you fail your interview for six months, you fail your interview. Make sure you show up all the time on time. Make sure True, that you yeah. don't miss days and call out because they won't promote somebody usually if they have bad attendance or um, have, very true. Yeah, other things like that. 
Uh, and if if you're looking to go, if Chip Runner is more of, because I understand a lot of people don't want the permanence of Chip Runner, because uh, I, I don't, you know, it's it's common feeling. Uh, it's really, I'm gonna phrase it this way: it's yeah. really hard to work in a poker room where the dealers make more money than you every single yeah. day. Every and, day. You yeah. Know, you're making good money compared to what you were doing before. You're making way more than what you say, pot bellies, right? You're making making oh, yeah. way more money than that. It's enough to live off of while you're training yourself and getting yourself to that point. Oh yeah. But it's not it's not as much compared to what the dealers are making. And you're very unfortunate. Unfortunately aware of that it's not. Yeah. yeah. The number one tip though, I'd say, uh, that really helped me out with this job when I first started working, uh, especially with having no prior experience in this field at all, I was naturally curious about everything. At literally everything, every position that there was, I, maybe not so much waitress, but being a host up front, uh, working in the cage, all of the little responsibilities that the supervisors have, and of course everything that comes with the job of chip running, I tried to learn a little bit of everything. Of course, chip running is my main job, so it's the number one focus, you know, honing my skills there and being the best that I can be at a chip runner right now is the main goal. But I'm also trying to learn a little bit about how cages run you know you know learning how to cut chips uh trying to see a little bit more of the back end just so i can kind of get in the cages head and see how the job could be easier with anything that i do uh same thing with the dealers uh try to see you know how often try to get in the mind of a dealer and see you know okay y'all are sitting at a table for 30 minutes you want to try to get as many hands in as possible right the way to do that is to keep it as smooth as possible which is when i come in I'm trying not to, you know, interrupt players, you know, while it's their action, trying to get time. I'm not trying to interrupt dealers, you know, telling them to hand me back the cash while they're in the middle of pitch, all that kind of stuff. I, I try to learn a little bit about each of the different positions so that I can learn how I can fit my duties in and still have everything run smooth. So there's, there's a secondary benefit to doing all that, which we sort of just touched on. Yes. Yeah. The supervisors need to know the job of every single role. I would actually say to you, if opportunities come up, and you did mention that you work at busy times, okay? It's easier to do this when you're working at not as busy times. Yeah, but a little bit slower. But if opportunities slower. come up where you can actually learn the cage job, actually learn the, the host job, actually learn the... And these are names that are for Texas Card House. These aren't yeah, what it's yeah. called everywhere, but if you can actually learn, you know, how to deal and you can actually learn how to um, run the front and all these different things, you could be a supervisor much, yeah. much more easily. It's way less training. It's much easier to hire you over somebody else because you're coming partially trained. Yeah. So that's just the type of thing that I was talking about. to take you to get comfortable at the job? I... I it really only took me I'd say a couple of weeks to get comfortable with the system and running it and it took me probably another couple of weeks to perfect it with what I had and of course as you were talking about with uh, you know the natural advancements that a poker house will have uh, it comes with changes you know uh, like I was saying I didn't always have the well uh, I didn't always have numbers to run my own time the way I was running it before is a little bit different than what it is now uh, I used but to run to adapt it yeah. got easier yeah, yeah. for sure the learning curve on this job isn't, you know, crazy high. It's it's a pretty, it's a fairly easy job. It, but at the same time, you have the ability to sort of up your game oh, and yeah. outperform. And when you do that, you are going to get tipped more by people. Oh, sure. it's a hundred and ten percent true. It, it really is. A lot of people, at least in my experience here at Texas Card House, uh, dealers, floors, and a lot of the players all see. You work hard. Yeah, they do. You're they right notice it and everybody. they reward it. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> How it all long then. until you became a boss? <laughs> uh, I'd say it probably took me. Uh, I'd say a f rough, rough boss status. True, probably true two answer. months. I was, it was months. Uh, right? And yeah. then, like for real, had it down. Probably three months. I like it.